Okay. All right, welcome. I see some people coming in. Thanks for coming. Um, really excited to have you here today. Um, so people are coming in, just introduce yourself in the chat. We like to know uh, who we're talking to, where you are, um, especially as you know we're uh, getting into our topic today. Um, we'd love to see uh, you know your businesses. So pop your website in there, pop your uh, Instagram. Um, so we can get an idea of who's in the audience today. But thank you for joining us. Um, really excited for today's talk. Uh, this is seemingly becoming an annual talk where we talk about craft fairs before the holidays. So um, we have a, a really great speaker here today, Gwen Barker, um, with uh, Pele Designs. There she is, <laughs> um, who's going to be talking. Um, so uh Works. We'll be getting started maybe about the next five minutes to let a few more people come in. Um, but again, you know, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. Great to know who we're who we're talking with. Um, just to run through, you know, what to expect today. Um, we are going to have a Q and A with Gwen. Um, hear a little bit about uh, her tabling displays when she goes off to craft fairs and craft markets. You know, we do, uh, we've been doing uh, this webinar series for now almost three years. Um, and the consistent uh, topic that people, oh, I see the chat is disabled. Sorry, everyone, give me one moment. Um, the, one of the consistent um, things that come up, attendees can. Okay, can someone try the chat? Oh, hey, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Thank you, Stephanie. Um, thanks for catching that. So yeah, um, now <laughs> you can have an opportunity to introduce yourself in the chat um, to, to everyone. Um, so uh, we'd love to see you know your business, see um, your website, Instagram, um, just pop it in there. This is an opportunity for you to connect with each other. Um, now, what I was saying before is, you know, we've done this webinar series for almost three years. One of the consistent topics that comes up is tabling, tabling displays, how to uh, navigate that. You know, people are often bringing a ton of inventory to these shows. How much should I bring? What should it look like? How do I stand out from uh, other vendors when there's maybe, you know, 50 other people at an event? Um, so this is our uh, third year in a row talking about tabling. Um, we have uh, a pro with us today, Gwen, um, who does some great in-person selling as well as online selling. So we're going to hear a little bit about that balance uh, in her life um, and how she thinks about her tabling displays. Um, and if you are interested in previous uh, topics, we do have a page on our website that we'll share um, after this webinar where we have all the recordings of our previous webinars. Um, just to talk about uh, some upcoming events as well, uh, we have uh, another webinar coming up, which will be the last one of the year. It's going to be selling on social media. So that'll be on November 10th, right before uh, the Thanksgiving uh, selling push that a lot of businesses experience. So this will be talking about how to maximize uh, your social media um, and actually uh, turn your followers into customers. Um, and then uh, finally, probably a really great place to meet other vendors, um, see other people's displays is going to be uh, Next Fab's Miracle on American Street. That's going to be at our North Philly location, 1800 North American on November 19th. Um, we're going to have 50 plus vendors there, um, many of which are our members at our makerspace. Um, so that would be a great event just to come and see the stuff that's being made within Philadelphia, um, within NextFab walls at our uh, you know, shared workshops, um, and also a good place to meet other people and see you know, what, what each other are doing, uh, borrow best practices. So we'd love to see you for that. Okay. Um, with that, I think we're going to get started. Uh, so just to reintroduce the topic, um, my name is Anna Solomon. I am NextFab Sales Manager. 
Uh, today we're talking about how to set up at craft fairs, markets, retail stores, um, and really all that goes into that, the planning, preparation of inventory, um, how to make sure that you're maximizing that, you know, two to three hours um, with uh, in-person customer interactions. And we're going to be hearing from Gwen today. Hello, Gwen, um, who set up a lovely display to talk through. Um, we are going to chat, uh, me and Gwen, for about uh, 20 to 30 minutes to hear more about her business. Um, as you're hearing us talk, put questions in the chat put questions in the Q&A, which you'll see at the bottom. And at the end of uh, the program, around 20 to 15 minutes, we reserve uh, just audience Q&A. So we'll take a look at those questions and um, start to hear some specific responses based on your experiences, the struggles you're having in your business. Um, and we'll try and get to as many as possible. Um, Lastly, this is going to be recorded, so we will send this out afterwards. All right. Um, without further ado, I, I am going to introduce our speaker today, um, Gwen Barker. Hello, Gwen. Hello. Uh, hello. Hello. Thank you, NextFab, for having me. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, and thank you all for attending. Appreciate you for taking out your time to attend today's webinar. So as Anna stated, um, I'm Gwen Barker, owner of Pella Designs. Ahem. So let's talk about this real quick. All right. So I'm going to start with the origin of my name. Shout out to NextFab for having this, this um, display plate, this display, uh, display made. <laughs> Shout out to them. All right. So the name of my, um, my business is Pella Designs. So let's analyze the logo. So K-P-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E. there's an accent on the E. The K and a P are consonant clusters, so it's pronounced Pele, not k -Pel. All right, the Pele tribe is, is one out of 16 tribes in Liberia. My, father, my father's tribe is the Pele tribe. Um, I'm first generation Liberian and Ceylonian American. <laughs> so this, this shape here is actually the shape of Liberia, which is located in West Africa. So. Um, I named my business Pella Designs after my tribe in Liberia. Even if your parents are from two separate tribes, you, you take on your father's tribe. So hence the name. And the Pella people back home are known for, um, they're known agriculturalists. So they are known to work with their hands. So being that my business is handmade, <laughs> handcrafted, I feel like I'm paying um, homage to my culture and heritage. So that's the meaning behind the name. And yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. Could you, <laughs> you talk a little bit about also your um, your background? How did you even get started with this business, and um, what it was like early growth look like for you? Oh, right. So I started this business in two thousand fourteen. Wow, long time ago. <laughs> Um, early Instagram days, early like social media in general days. Um, I started this as initially as a hobby. Um, what do you call it? I was working my two part-time jobs at the time and I really enjoyed um, making crafts with my hands. So I started making my own jewelry. Um, during this time, there's a, there was a hairstyle that was really popular and it's, um, and it's called faux locks or um, artificial locks and then people who have real locks also known as dreadlocks so people um, I've always wanted to grow locks of my own um, but I decided not to go that route just yet <laughs> so I was just living vicariously through others so every time I would see um, people with locks wear jewelry in their hair I'm just like oh my gosh where did you get the jewelry from and they would always tell me oh I got it from a festival or a store that you know un unless you know these festival stores you're, you're not going to go to it so I was like, okay, well, then I'm just gonna make it for myself. <laughs> so I did my own hair, which takes hours, by the way. I did my own hair and then I made my own hair jewelry to put onto it. So when I say hair jewelry, let me show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so if you look closely, let me take it out the packaging so you don't see a glare. All right, so this is what I mean by hair jewelry. So if you look closely, this is the packaging that I have for my hair jewelry. And you wear it on braids, twists, or locks. 
So this is what it looks like. So I decided to make my own being that I couldn't find where I could get this from. And um, that lent itself to me starting to make a line of hair jewelry because I saw people, there was a demand for it. And like I said, during the time, there's a certain hairstyle that was really popular. So everybody was getting the hairstyle and everybody wanted to decorate their hair accordingly. So I was, I was the one to go to. <laughs> so um, after we call it doing hair jewelry, then I lent, it lent itself to um, nose jewelry where I'll make fake nose rings. And then it lends itself to the head wraps that I'm wearing. So again, I'm first generation Liberian, Sierra Leonean American. So I have mad family that travels to and from Sierra Leone and Liberia. So whenever they would come, I would ask them to please bring some fabric so I can make these really cute and stylish cultural pieces. So, <laughs> and then also at the time, I also did hair. Notice I said I did my own hair last time. It takes a lot of skill to be able to do your own hair. So um, um, on top of me having my part-time jobs and making hair jewelry, I also um, did hair. So I would do braids and twister locks. And whenever I would do hair, I would like offer it as the, um, what do you call it, as a complimentary. So I'm like, hey, if you're interested, here's a, here's a, here's a couple of head wraps that you can check out, you know, browse along while I'm doing your hair because it takes hours anyway. So I know you're going to be looking around. So why don't you look around at this? <laughs> So I had, um, what do you call it, head wraps, and I had hair jewelry. I had all the accessories that you would need for your hair. So it just made sense. Um, now that, I, what do you call it, that I had all these products now, one lends itself to another, to another, to another. I had this big inventory of products now. So I'm like, okay, well, now I can finally, um, you know, sell it. <laughs> since the demand is high enough for me to do that. And when I say the demand is high, I would literally be walking out of a store and um, get tagged, like flagged down, like, hey, 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 who did your hair? It looks so cute. Or hey, hey, where did you get your head wrapped from? It's so cute. And to the point where I had to go to Staples and go make cards because I was having too many random people's numbers on my phone. <laughs> so now that I know the demand is there and I have the products, then I decided to make a website. Initially, I started on Etsy. Um, what do you call it? I utilized Etsy and I marketed via um, Instagram. Instagram was, you know, it's if you're an early adapter for like social media platforms, you can get a whole bunch of um, we call it, a whole bunch of people early. Um, you can get sales, and that's why I really attribute social media to my growth because Instagram allowed me to be international by year two, by the second year in business, which is wild because as you know. Most businesses do not make it um, past five years, um, unfortunately. So um, yes, Instagram helped a bunch. And then I started utilizing like email marketing, but that's that's with other, other um, questions. So to answer your question, I started, <laughs> I had my products, I had a demand, I had my website, I had social media to market it. And um, it just went on from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they well, yeah, I think like origin stories are so helpful, especially when someone's getting started, like trying to navigate their own origin story, especially if you're living it. Um, so I really appreciate you walking through each step um, of your growth and what actually that pointed to. Um, I didn't know that you got started like doing hair and that's where the first products were sold. That's really, that's really awesome. Um, <laughs> Yeah, one of my questions was it, it all did it start online or in person? And it sounds like it started in person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, what does that like look like now? You know, are you still doing like what's where are the majority of your sales coming from? Are they coming from online or are they coming from uh in person sales? Mostly a majority online, um, and some in in person. Only time is in person person is if you know it's a friend of mine and they live not too far away and they need it for like a vacation and they're like I can't um, I can't wait for postage can I just pick it up <laughs> so I offer pick up only if I know you <laughs> I offer pick up in person um, but online is number one number two is pick up and number three is craft fairs craft markets and retail stores mm -hmm. so you still see value in going to craft fairs um, yes Yes. yes, that is where you find like-minded people, business owners such as yourself. Um, 
there's so many, there's so much that I've learned just by going to craft fairs. Let me actually bring this to you. All right. So this book, which is literally just a journal, I carry this journal with me all the time because I'm very scatterbrained. So this keeps me organized. I literally write all my to-do lists. So whenever I go to craft fairs, bringing a pen and pad is imperative to anything that you want to do like in, in regards to progression. Because I will see something at a craft fair. I'm like, that's a good idea. Then I'll be like, then I'm like, oh, that that's actually fire. <laughs> So, so bringing a pen and pad is, 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 is so necessary. And um, there's so many things that I've learned by going to craft fairs. Like, um, let me just name a couple. There's this girl who was making earrings and she made QR code earrings. And I'm just like, what? That, that's genius. <laughs> So she's like, oh well, um, I might have run out of it, run out of it here. So you can just scan my ear. I'm like, excuse me? <laughs> wild so like an innovative ways to like gain customer uh what do you call it uh gain more customer gain a more customer base um another thing that i know uh, um i saw was how people are made notes of or how people um depending on what they were selling how they displayed it so i'm just like oh okay the way that i do my head wrap how i display my head wraps i didn't bring it with me because I'm just going to be very frank with y'all. It's very heavy. <laughs> it's very heavy. And I am not, I'm not the strongest person. So that being said, if you do go on NextFab's um, Instagram, the Philly one, if you go through the slideshow, go there and it'll, it'll show you all the different um, display things that I made here, right here at NextFab. Again, shout out to NextFab. Shout out to NextFab because there's so many display and um, display pieces that I made here that off the strength of everything that I wrote down while I was at craft shows. So I say all that to say, yes, very necessary. So um, I think I answered that question, yeah? <laughs> yeah, and it kind of starts to go into the next question I had, which, you know, talks about um, your brand identity. You know, anyone who goes to your Instagram, um, I did link your website in the chat, um, we'll see that you have a really strong brand identity across all your platforms on your website. Um, so could you talk a little bit about like when you're planning craft fair displays, how do you make it all cohesive? Um, and so I think that's, you know, you're talking about building displays and, and planning that out. So I know you also have some examples um, behind us. So could you, talk, could you talk a little bit about that and and even just how you got started and how it grew let me bring you closer okay so what I, this is what i've learned from craft fairs so this is a qr code signage that i have on my table so the reason why i made this or had this made is because um, there be some instances where i um run out of like run up run out of a product and so if you scan this qr code it brings you directly to my website where you can order right then and there um another a way to like capture emails for um email marketing um would be to if you offer like a a, a percentage off coupon code um if especially if they're first time purchase or if you want to track how many sales that you made at the crafter which is i hope you're writing that down because that's those are gems that I just dropped. Did you did you catch them? Okay. <laughs> so I have this QR code made that has link to my website. It has my Instagram, and then it has my website at the very bottom. So that brings you directly to my website. In the event that I run out of a product or I run out of inventory, um, I'm, I can then direct them there and capture their email. So I actually ran out of business cards. <laughs> So we're gonna pretend that this is, is a set of business cards. I just had like a little business card folder made. So anybody who wants to, you know, have a physical business card, they're open to it. Now this, this, this is one of the questions was, um, how do I keep track of in, in, inventory? This is amazing. This is a Shopify um, card reader. So you put your card inside and whether you have chip or swipe and it allows you to do that and directs, it links directly to your website. So you don't have to do the trouble of um, selling in person or point of sale 
um, uh, purchases. And then you have to go all the way back home to go and, and um, edit all the inventory and, and remember all of the inventory that, <laughs> that was sold. That just takes the headache out. So um, Shopify has this that allows you to link. Um, I'm not sure if Square does, but I'm just speaking from my experience of Shopify allows you to um, do it directly off of your website. So don't give yourself a headache. Get, get a card reader that links directly to your website. All right. So because my prices change depending on um, the craft fairs and whatnot and you know the price of materials and everything, this is supposed to be a price list. So let's pretend this is a price list. <laughs> so we have that also sitting right at the forefront because another thing is you know people have their stuff displayed, but people like to see how much things cost. And then there's also some people who are really introverted that will come to your table, and if they don't see, if they don't have their answers, their answer, their questions answered, they're they're going to be discouraged and walk away from your table. So do yourself a favor and have a price list out in the open where people don't have to ask because that that's just a necessary time, you know, you're spent uh, conversing with somebody and you could use that time to do something else. So have your price list out in the open so you're not so you don't, you know, risk losing on a customer who is introverted. That happens a lot <laughs> more than you know. All right. So over here, we have a little mirror. Okay, so this one, uh, shout, out to, shout out to Next Fab again. <laughs> this was made um, at Next Fab. This is mirror acrylic. And if you look closely, it has the words embellish yourself in culture. So that is my tagline for my business, embellish yourself in culture, because <laughs> of course. <laughs> so that's there. Um, we'd call it um, my other display for my head wraps. If you, again, I'm going to reference um, Next Fab's Instagram, go there, the Philly one. Go there and swipe through. You will see a head wrap display where that has where I can um, where I can slide in my laptop to play uh, head wrap tutorials. And right beside it has a mirror that you can look and you can follow along. Right underneath it has all of the different um, varieties of head wraps that you can um, uh, pick from. So let me speak to that. If you are looking at the um, we'd call it the display for the head wraps. So the reason why I made that display. Um, is because I have a lot of people because I was because I was born I was born here in the states so I'm first generation but I'm first generation to Liberian parents so growing up I learned how to how to tie my head wrap by watching my mom not many people have that same experience they were born here and probably don't know you know where the origins um, or the ethnicity you know so with that being said um, I have tutorials for y'all. <laughs> I have had head wrap tutorials. You don't have to worry about, um, there's so many people who are coming to my table and they're like, oh my gosh, I love your head wraps, but I don't know how to tie them. And that was, that became so, that was said so many times to the point where I'm like, all right, I'm gonna make a display piece that speaks exactly to that. So uh, on the website, it has, oh, not on the website, on the um, Instagram post, it'll have the mirror. It has a mirror on this side. It has um, my laptop playing with my head wrap tutorial on this side. So you're able to go through and, um, what do you call it? And follow along, <laughs> follow along with the head wrap tutorial that is right next to you. And then if you feel, you know, if you're feeling froggy, jump, <laughs> make the purchase. <laughs> Cause now, now you know how to tie the head wrap. So there's, it takes out the excuse of, I don't know how to tie it. Cause now you've learned and now you can, you know, go peruse along the, 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 what do you call it, the, the shelves and see what you like. Pick one out. I'll help y'all eat. I'll help y'all as well. So I did that. Um, next, we have, um, when I have like a, sm like smaller craft fairs, craft shows, I'll have like this condensed um, setup, weight, which you see right here. I'm actually going to pick it up. So follow me. Okay. All right. So we have, Pretend that this is my laptop that's playing the head wrap tutorial. And back here, you see the head wrap on what it could look like. So that is styled in the bow-like manner. Or you can have the one that I have that I wear usually, which is, I, I call it the Erica Badu wrap because this is Erica Badu-esque. <laughs> and then here, we have a display. So let me speak to this real quick. All right. So the reason I made, uh, I or I, I bought this um, silicone ear from Etsy <laughs> um, 
what before I had this silicone piece here, legit, my the ear cuff would just be sitting on the table. And if it's sitting on the table and somebody walks by your table, nobody's going to know what, <laughs> what's there because it's flat and they're just gonna walk on by your booth or your table because they don't see any, there's no depth to your table. There's nothing that draws the eyes to the table. So if you see an ear laying on the table, you're gonna look, <laughs> you're gonna interact with it. So I love to have interactive pieces on my table because that draws people to the table. And when people, and when you draw crowds, what else are you gonna draw? More people. And if you have more people, this increases your chances of having a sale. That's what we want at the end of the day. <laughs> we want a sale. So um, I have this and it shows off my Kari cluster ear cup. So instead of it sitting on the table and people wondering what it is, if it's worn, now you understand what it is and you don't have to ask any questions. Um, the whole point of the display table and everything is to display your, display your pieces. Also, um, taking out the guesswork of wondering how much it is on what it is. <laughs> if, if you see this, you know that this is an earring and you know this is an ear cuff. Um, early in my vending, my craft vending days, I did not know how to, um, what do you call it? I didn't know how to display my fake nose rings. So they would literally be in a bowl on the table. That doesn't even, that doesn't even sound correct. <laughs> Because why is it in a bowl on the table? So they're like, are these rings? <laughs> and you can't blame anybody for asking because if you saw a bowl of, 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 of wire sitting in a, in a cup or in a bowl, you're going to ask what it is. So now that I have this um, display piece here, also made out of um, silicone, I named it Nosferatu, if you get it, get it? Because it's nose, Nosferatu, yeah, haha. <laughs> I have those for sitting on the table to show off my, um, my nose pieces. And then I have Ernest the ear, um, also showing off the Kyrie Cluster ear cups. And I name my display pieces because it gives it more personality. <laughs> okay, another thing is I have added um, with the packaging for the table, again, trying to remove the guesswork. If this is sitting on a table, you probably wouldn't know what it was and you probably just pass on by. But the packaging actually tells you what the product is. And that's across the board. I'm gonna go through um, the rest of them, but I still wanna continue to talk about this vending table. So the vending table for small events, um, this is how I usually have it um, laid out. And then I usually have a wooden piece, which I didn't bring because it's, it's kind of heavy. <laughs> All right, so you're going to have your signage that either has like your QR code that links either to your cash app, your Venmo, your website. Um, so either payment options or website or your Instagram. Um, you know, there's some that have, what do you call it? I have my Instagram linked here as well. So you have that signage so people can get in touch with you. You also have your business cards for, you know, old school folks who want <laughs> tangible pieces in their hand. <laughs> So definitely have the business cards um, out. Definitely have your handy dandy card reader so you don't have to worry about, um, what do you call it, going back and checking the inventory on your website. All that is linked to your website. And then you have your price list. So all those introverted customers um, are, you know, <laughs> they can actually interact with your table because they know what, what they're coming there for and they know what the cost is and whatnot. Because not all people want are friendly, not friendly, not all people are like, you know, bubbly and everything. Some people are just reserved and they just kind of scan the table, see what they like. And if they like something, they got it in there and they're out. <laughs> so the next thing is I usually have my, um, my head wrap tutorial playing on my laptop. This is my laptop holder. Um, I have a display of what the head wraps can look like. Um, I have a whole bunch of head wraps here on the table. Now let me talk about the packaging real quick. So this is me. <laughs> so this is, tells you exactly what it is. So before I had this packaging, I would just lay the head wraps on the table, which is a bad idea because a lot of people mistaken these for clutches. And if you didn't know what it was, it does look like it could be a clutch. So, <laughs> so understandable. So I made sure that I had these. And also when you purchase a head wrap, what I, have our inside of the care instructions so you know exactly like what to do with the head wraps and how to care for them because um 
yeah, this is made out of cotton and you just want to make sure that, you know, you extend the life of your head wrap and not have it, you know, shriveled up and, <laughs> and looking crazy. And then um, what I also like to do is have like plants in the back. I'm a plant mama, so I'm always having, um, you know, life, it brings life to the table, vitality and whatnot, and just makes the, the area look cute. So these are, these are the usual um, display pieces that I have at small craft events. For bigger ones, as you, like I said, I'm referencing Next Fab Billy, uh, Billy's Instagram page. Go there and you will see the big displays that I have for bigger shows. But yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, I forgot to talk about one more item. Okay. Yes. So with, head <laughs> so with head wraps, I also have these ear savers. So um, I know some people are wearing masks and people aren't. For the people who are wearing masks, I personally hate having my ears outside of my head wrap. It's uncomfortable and I feel like I feel like my ears give me more support with head wraps. So uh, in order for me to keep my ears inside, because <laughs> it also warms my ears as well, um, I wear these um, ear savers that I, I made here at NextFab. Shout out to NextFab again. <laughs> I use their laser engraver to make these ear, um, ear savers. And so as you see here, this is the back of my neck. <laughs> and this is the ear saver here. And then, um, so this is where it, a lot, it sits. It sits in the back of your neck and not like stressing your ears out. <laughs> so this is what I usually have as a complimentary piece for anybody who buys um, two head wraps or more. So, you know, a little sales, sales type of, you know, situation. <laughs> but yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you for the very comprehensive look at everything. I mean, I, the thing that I see as you're talking is you thought about how people are using the products, mm -hmm. what experience they're not getting on the website. You know, you're enhancing the experience of the product. Actually, when you go in person, they get to see uh, a head wrap tutorial with you <laughs> there. Um, they get to see <laughs> how certain things physically look on your display pieces. Um, and the other thing that I hear as you're talking is it didn't always look like this. <laughs> it looked totally different. And you noticed people misidentifying um, how they're supposed to use the product or even what it is. Um, so I think those are really important things to remember is like one, like just go do the thing and see what people are confused about and continue to develop your display. Um, but I also like the idea of staging, like this is a place where they're going to see the product physically and, and trying to imagine it into their life. So you've done a really good job of, you know, extending their imagination into like how they could actually work with it. So, yeah, I... Exactly. And I didn't even get to show off, just give me like two minutes to show this off real quick. Because yeah. This is necessary, y'all. Okay, so I'm going to gonna show all of this real quick. All right, so as you saw the ear saver and you see what it looks like, yes. You see the earrings, you see what it looks like, yes. So let me speak to <laughs> the packaging. So this is actually out. Oh, there you go. All right. So this is my ear. <laughs> so this exactly shows what the, the um what the product is. And so all of these, this is me again. So and this is me again. <laughs> so all of these pieces here are um uh, photos from camp from past campaigns. And I thought it would be genius to like put the the head on um, the we call it put the pictures with the products because now people understand what it is and and I get to show off all of my like um photography from my early like earlier years of, of running my business like this is nostalgic to me like every time I pack an order I'm smiling internally <laughs> because I'm just like oh they bought this that's real cute <laughs> and even down to like this is my friend's neck <laughs> And this is this we could see is a necklace. So I have neck, I have ear, I have eye, I have 
and I have hair. Um, since I don't, since I didn't have locks, um, shout out to my friend who came in. And I was like, hey, can I use your head and hair so I can make packaging? But yeah, <laughs> I just want to speak to that. <laughs> yeah, you've been. I like. I think you also like covered how your Instagram and your imagery and the things you use on your website bridges into real life. Um, I like anyone who's been on multiple of these webinars, everyone says photography, great photos are essential when you're first getting started. Cause you can use them in all sorts of ways. Um, and just like the fact that you took the time to, to take really beautiful photos and they're still proving to be useful. Um, even like you said, this is from your early days of starting the business. Third year. <laughs> I'm approaching my ninth. <laughs> yeah, beautiful images and photography do not go stale. You can reuse them, remake them um, in different aspects of your business as it grows. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I do want to turn it over to audience Q&A in just a moment. Um, I do have one last question here, which is, what are some of the major lessons learned from selling at craft fairs? I think you talked a little bit about like lessons learned in displays, um, but what are some words of wisdom for those getting started? You know, what, what mistakes do you not want others to make? Okay, definitely know where you're gonna be selling, like know your niche. Um, know if, the, if there's demand at that craft fair, because yes, I have, you know, I sell stuff like this, which is great. Um, you probably wouldn't see this kind of work at, I don't want to name any names, but like if I'm selling hair and accessory products, I'm not going to go to a, a craft fair that, that just deals with um, things that aren't hair and, <laughs> and accessories related. So know your niche, know your target audience, know your target audience. That is so important because then you'll be out here trying to sell things to the wrong person <laughs> and then you're wasting your time. So that's number two. Number three, um, when you're doing these vending events, please, please, please consider yourself. When I say consider yourself, like things, think of like, what am I gonna eat? <laughs> these are things that go out, go out the window <laughs> when you're planning a, an event because you're thinking solely about your display and how you're gonna sell, but you're not thinking about yourself. You need to be marketing and that requires a lot of energy. If you're a person who has low energy, maybe tr try drinking some coffee, try getting a restful night of sleep, like prepare yourself mentally and physically for this event. So what, what that looks like is making sure you pack something to eat, making sure you pack a, a whole bunch of water and then staying hydrated because you're gonna be talking a lot <laughs> and your mouth is gonna get dry. <laughs> Another thing is, if you're having somebody who is going to be vending alongside you, uh, if it's a big and long event, please have a partner so you can take bathroom breaks or just breaks in general or food breaks because it, you know, having people constantly to your table, you're not going to have time to like rest and you're going to be burnt out by the end of it. So making sure you have somebody beside you to have bathroom breaks and all of that is necessary. Um, what do you call it? Uh, do, 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 do. Yeah, like I spoke to it earlier, if you run out of products, find an, an alternative way to get still get people to your website while still get um, capturing their email so you can market to them later. Um, you might not have it now, but you know, if you have their email, you can always do it later. So yes, know your niche, know your target audience, have food, have, have water, have sustenance. <laughs> Make sure you have a restful night. Um, also, if the person who's going to be like vending beside you or like your, your vending partner, also make sure like, you know, parking because parking is like, and loading time, loading time, stressful. <laughs> <You're good. laughs> so making sure that they got you and they got you in that, in that, um, in that way. Yeah very necessary because you're gonna you can't park and then unload and then do this and then do, you're going to be burnt out before it even begins so yeah yeah these are the things <laughs> yeah mm -hmm. think of your own experience as well 
<laughs> Do you hear the passion in my voice? Yes. yes. <laughs> Don't follow my mistakes, please. <laughs> I can hear the, uh, the experiences that um, make you feel strongly. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we actually have a question related, which is, have you ever had an awful craft fair where you didn't sell anything? What oh, do you do? Oh, yes. You made yes. a lot of inventory and uh, for a show that gets canceled because of weather. So yeah, like how do you, how do you, you plan for stuff like that? I'm so sorry that happened to you. Yeah, yeah, that, you know, <laughs> that happens. It, it, it is, you know, it's no fault of your own, you know, just make sure you go to your handy dandy notebook <laughs> and see what you can do differently next time. Maybe there's something that, you know, was to your fault. There are a couple of things that you can note and you can, you know, take note of and work on later. And also it, it could be like, just not that many people don't want, you know, want to, want what you what you're selling which brings itself to well is that your target audience is that your niche you know <laughs> you could be selling to the wrong audience so um those are things to consider um but yeah as ha happened to me many a times and as far as out outdoor um craft fair and events and everything most of the things that i do are indoors sometimes during the summer i'll do i'll do outdoors like a dunde that's my favorite one to do outdoors but with outdoors make sure you have a 10 by 10 tent because it gets hot. <laughs> Make sure you're wearing sunscreen because it gets hot. And you <laughs> and then you you you'll do be two different complexions depending on what you're wearing. <laughs> So make sure you <laughs> make sure you have a tent. Make and if you don't have a tent, make sure you have an umbrella that like you know that shades. So you're in the shade if there is no if there aren't any trees around. Another thing is if it's windy, please consider please consider also. Um, getting sandbags for your for your tent because that will fly away <laughs> so getting that also if you're going to be doing like uh, banners for your tape um you know to to for your booth also make sure those have sandbags those will fly away anything that's airborne please just think about like weights or sandbags something to keep it down so it's not <laughs> also another thing to think about if it's going to be <laughs> raining <laughs> um uh, what are those tarps that you can put on top of your um your table because there is one time that I was vending with with my best friend um shout out shout out to her shop draped <laughs> I was vending alongside her and she was selling t-shirts and it was raining all her t-shirts got damaged please bring a tarp to put over the table in an in the event that it rains because you don't want to be left with damaged goods so yeah Ugh. That's something you don't think about typically. So yes. Okay. So we did have uh, a pre-submitted question about um, inventory tracking, which you talked a little bit about. So uh, I make a wide range of crafts that are all different, one of a kind soaps, unique resin coasters, and much more. Makes it harder to keep track of inventory. My biggest challenge with craft fairs is keeping track of all my different products so I can efficiently update my Etsy listing after selling at the fair. <laughs> yes, please, please remove yourself from Etsy. I don't know if Etsy has, has one of these, but please, if you have, uh, what do you call it? One of those card readers that links up to your store, it, it will save you the headache of having to do two jobs. So what do you think? answer to that question <laughs> yeah and i see someone who says do you shopify for both your website and e-commerce or only for e-commerce both okay because it has an option of point of point of sale which is what this is um linked for and then also website online yes making it easier for yourself yes yes <laughs> and that's why mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a, another question that came in here. I am recently starting out and I have made products uh, with my own money, but I have not seen sales to compensate for the investment I made. Uh, do you keep going by making new things or market even more the products you have? Any info is appreciated. Your energy is great. I agree. <laughs> right. So let me tell y'all, yes, I'm approaching my ninth year. My ninth year will be on um, January 5th. My first year, I made $88. Uh, 
I made $88 as my first year of business. So all that money I put into photography and, and, and products and like materials to make the products, I did not see, I did not see it one look of it. And when someone does this, when an African person does this, that means they didn't see it at all. <laughs> so, so yeah, that, that I, I feel for you. I feel for you, which is, you know, once you make it past the fifth year of business, hooray for you because most businesses do not. I say, keep going. Try, try to find different ways of marketing your product. Maybe it's not working the way that you're currently doing it. Try to find different ways. Meet up with like-minded um, business owners. Network with them. See what they're doing. You know, see how that can, um, what can be applied to, to your business. So, and you also have to have a level of discernment. Um, person who's able to judge, you know, judge. <laughs> like, I'll see something and I'll be like, that's cool for them, but not for me. And then you keep it moving. But if there's something that is applicable to you, then, you know, write it down and then make it based off how your, um, um, what do you call it, for your brand identity and business and whatnot. But I say continue, just try to market it in a different um, manner. And yeah. Yeah, keep going. Keep going. Mm -hmm, definitely keep going. Don't stop. It's, it, it is discouraging. The, like startup years. Yeah, there was a lot of money that, you know, the first couple of years you, you're using your own money. And then, you know, once you start making money, then you start, uh, we call it, we call it, uh, uh, I can't think of the word, <laughs> reinvesting it back into your business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, keep going. Um, you're never going to get it right the first time, I think is also a big theme of all the webinars we do. No one got it right the, the first moment they were doing it is definitely a virtue and honestly I'm not a patient person I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm not a patient person at all um however there's there's some things that you have to be patient by force <laughs> if you want if running a business is about endurance like yeah. you have to be able to have uh, uh, you know those virtues in order to continue to go to keep going also having a support system is amazing my support system is is amazing <laughs> can't you tell <laughs> like making sure that you have like people who are in your corner and who are rooting for you yeah yeah because you need that motivation on days where it's like oh I don't know if I could if I can continue somebody to talk you out of it mm -hmm. yeah find a community Definitely. um we have another pre-submitted question that came in uh, my question is how best to show off artwork, prints and original paintings in a small space. I'm an artist doing my first event in a few weeks uh, and all the advice I find is for more traditional products. Uh, okay, this was a good one. Um, so to, excuse me, to display your prints. Um, okay, so as you know, I, I or, I have a lap, my laptop that shows like the tutorial of my head wraps, right? So I think it would be a good idea to have um, uh, have your prints displayed on your iPad or laptop and have it like a slideshow. Every five seconds, it moves on to the next um, print. Um, maybe even going as far as making it like some type of uh, encapsulated uh, uh, sign or some, some kind of signage that points to the... Um, iPad or laptop that's on the table that's like look here to see all the prints that I that I'm offering so it so instead of you having it displayed all over it like you'll just you know be on your laptop or iPad and it'll just go um, think maybe something like that I think that would help and also having having like video or anything to your table increases your chances of getting a sale because that's going to draw people's eyes to your table so I, I start with that I think that's great advice, especially the in in original artwork. It's also scary to transport sometimes. Um, so uh, finding ways to to bring more with less it's always good. Um, we did have a question. Um, this is the scanner? I think they're talking about the little card reader. Is it good for a business that is service oriented? Do you know about you know it tracking? services versus products or is that something you've ever experienced 
I haven't experienced services. I'm more of a, I'm a product-based business. However, uh, if this, if, it, if your service is offered online on a website and they can purchase it on a website, maybe that you doing it that way, like packaging the service uh, uh, into like a product, mm. making it like available on where you can purchase it. And then you can still use the card reader to purchase the service. So maybe, maybe. <laughs> Does the Shopify reader only track if they paid with a card? Um, unfortunately, yes. However, you can still go in because there's a software that's uh, that is connected to it. You can go into your phone and then you can change that um, accordingly. So, uh, yeah, this the card reader is only for the card, and if you use cash, you can still go on to the to the app and do it and edit it there. And I would do that immediately, either that or at least write it down. Record it some type of way. Exactly. We do have time for maybe one or two more questions if you want to uh, pop them in the chat. Oh, we have one that just came in. <laughs> um, I, so I don't have to go to mine. Um, what app do you recommend to use when having a slideshow for your products? For example, if I like to use my iPad for display, to display the usage of my products, currently I use video and save it on Google Photos, however, it freezes occasionally. Oh. Mm. Mm. maybe uploading it to like youtube or something mm. try that way because the only way that i uh, that i would use that i've been using it for like my head wrap tutorials i'll just pull it up from my downloads and then have it play but i also have it on youtube as well so in the event that is acting up at least i have youtube where um, i can play it off of and then just have it on replay but as far as like a specific app or software i, I don't know of any off the top of my head unfortunately yeah, I know also the uh, Wi-Fi isn't always reliable in spots you go. <laughs> so yeah. that brings me to this. Also, um, if there's an event that you need, like my father is, is an environmental scientist. So he always brings, <laughs> he always brings me like generators. And he's like, I think you could use this for, you know, your event. And I'm like, what? And then one time I actually used it because it was an outdoor event and I needed power to like to you know charge my phone because my phone your phone will die y'all so please bring a portable charger so to charge my phone and to charge my laptop so it can continue to play the videos um and that generator came in handy i was like oh this is actually clutch <laughs> so um what do you call it so that and also like hooking up your hotspot if the if the wi-fi isn't good so yeah, add that to the list of things that you need for a, a vending event. A hotspot, an external charger, maybe a generator if you happen to have <laughs> And also because they charge extra for electricity. I'm just like, why? Oh. <laughs> so I'm like, I don't need electricity. I have my handy dandy generator right here. And it's literally <laughs> handheld. Like it's a small generator. So oh. it's not like a big gas. <laughs> no. So, yeah. <laughs> Another thing to add to the list. Um, I have one uh, a question. Um, I think we have time maybe for one more from the audience, but I have plenty of questions <laughs> for you. Um, I'm game. You know, how did you develop sort of your pitch to customers? Um, how do you describe yourself when someone first comes up to your table and you're introducing them to the products? You know, how do you start that conversation? Okay, so they come up to the table and they're looking around. Do you need any help? Oh, yes, no, okay. So even if they say yes or no, I'm, go I'm going to tell them. Okay, so we're going to start with this. So this is, we have lock jewelry over here. Then we have um, earrings over here. So all of these are handmade by yours truly. Um, being that I'm already charismatic, it helps. <laughs> so I'm able to just be like, on the fly like this is what i do this is how i made it this is i actually this display page that you look display piece you're looking at yeah i made it and it draws like oh my gosh you made all of, you did all of these things and it draws people in so i'm just like hey, gotcha so <laughs> after you reel reel them in 
with your expertise at wood, wood, wood making and whatnot. And then also the fact that you're working with your hands. And then you tell them the story about like Pella designs and what and how you got there and whatnot and how it got itself to be from this is the inspiration to this is what you currently see here. Mm -hmm. so yeah, so add some charisma, tell your pitch um, and big yourself up. Big yourself up. Talk your stuff. Um, this is no time to be meek or shy or any of that. You have to, you have, you can't be humble because <laughs> this is what I make. This is what I do. Yes. So if you like to purchase, here's my, you know, and then usher them into the, the sales journey. Mm -hmm. Yes. Cause there's some people who are like teetering and they're like, well, I don't know if I need to, I, I obliterated all of that excuse with the head wrap. Well, I don't know how to tie hair. There's a tutorial right there in a mirror. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't know. There's there's this QR code right here. There's there's more. Well, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah, that's my pitch. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I see also in your display, like I I am in sales. The, you're overcoming selling obstacles that people put up, even built into your display. The, the excuses that people usually make that, that inhibits them from buying, you've answered with yes. people, which I think is very smart. Um, where do you see your business going in the next two years? Well, um, I have a lot of family and friends who ask, like, are you going to, like, make, are you going to sell in Liberia? Because I have some people, like, I have some international customers like, do you sell outside of the US? Um, so hopefully I can make it where I have like a little store back home in Liberia because I visit, I try to visit often, but I've only been there once. <laughs> I tried to go, but then the pandemic. So yeah, but in the next two years, hopefully, yeah, hopefully have a store actually in Liberia, <laughs> the place where, you know, all of this is, uh, uh, we call it, comes from and inspired from but um yeah also hopefully having my stuff more in in uh, more retail stores uh yeah yeah because right now i only have it in, in two yeah and two so hopefully in more stores and hopefully becoming international those are two things <laughs> so would you ever consider doing a brick and mortar uh here in the states who that comes with a lot of um responsibility funds yeah. and uh things that honestly in the next two years probably not you know let's see how the economy goes and then ask me again and then i'll give me answer that <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah good, good loose loose uh holding your your two-year plan loosely which we all have now learned we we've had to pivot significantly almost every year um for the past three years Mm -hmm. <laughs> and do you have any new products that you're working on? Well, I just came out with a new collection. It's called the Foliage Collection. I'm currently wearing one of the head wraps right now. It's called Tanza. Um, and also these earrings too. We got the Plant Bay earrings. This is what you see here. Real cute, real cute. Um, what do you call it? I'm probably going to make something fall related, like an ear cuff that's fall related. Um, but those are the three products, or well, two tangible products that have just come out. <laughs> and I'm working on the third. So um, I'm making stuff in like seasons because I think that making products in dirt, like to the season, really does help me organize and categorize better. So. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to link your website in for everyone to see. Um, before we close, do you have any last words of advice for everyone? Um, yeah, yeah. Um, have a level of discernment. Um, literally learn yourself, know yourself. What makes you comfortable? Wear comfortable clothing at these vending events. Because look, the reason I'm wearing black, I wear black all the time. I have hyperhidrosis and I sweat a lot. So wearing comfortable clothing, wear it doesn't embarrass you. <laughs> <laughs> be yourself have fun i'm a person that loves to laugh if you haven't noticed already have fun um plan accordingly so you're not stressed i keep i keep going to this um what do you call it 
and make the necessary movements to you know progress big yourself up just you know everything is make sure you have a lot of rest make sure you know yourself and um have faith mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you yes. good good words of wisdom um and with that i just want to thank everyone for uh coming and uh listening to gwen speak thank you gwen uh this was very informative yes. Uh, I loved that we could see your display firsthand. Um, and for those of you who want to watch the recording, we are going to be sending that out. Um, sometime in the next few days, we're going to get it up on uh, YouTube so you'll be able to see it. Um, and I do want to remind you that we are uh, having another webinar on November 10th. That's going to be about selling on social media. So basically the other side of what Quinn talked about, uh, the online sales how do you really uh, get those going, especially for the holiday season? Um, and you will not want to miss the Miracle on American Street vending event. Um, we do have, I will send uh, the link in the chat here, uh, but that is gonna be on November 19th from uh, 11 to five at NextFab's North Philly location at 1800 North American. It'll be 50 plus vendors, there's gonna be food, there's gonna be all sorts of products at NextFab. We have people making stuff from like what Gwen is doing, you know, accessories, small scale um, to like custom furniture and chairs and art. So it's going to be a very eclectic group, but uh, that's what makes it fun and interesting. So uh, come on by, meet some people who are also vending um, and maybe find a gift for uh, someone in your, in your life. Um, well, Thank you all for coming um, and we'll see you uh, next month. Thanks y'all. <laughs>